afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Coffee Talk. And I know it says Coffee Talk with Pastors Merrick and Linda Hufton, but today it's, you have me. It's Tessa Hufton with Pastor Linda Hufton. And um, actually, she's very kind to be here today. Um, Pastor Merrick is in Florida at the uh, uh, Rodney Howard Brown conference um, getting filled up and grace was also there and tessa was actually running around doing two street reaches this afternoon because she's covering her site and covering for her sister's site and then my son was too busy across the street so i was going to do it all by myself and then because <laughs> i always I have something in here i always have something to say and um but tessa came in and um so she's here with me today and we've got stuff we're going to talk about and um so how are you? I'm doing good. How was your street read site? Was it cold? I actually was just doing the bus stop. So I was just passing out flowers at the bus stop and yes. And then you it. go do another one this afternoon though, Yes, right? I'm going to Seven Pines this afternoon to do street reach. So it's going to be fun. Yay. Winter has hit Atlanta. Yeah, it was cold and beginning to rain. So we passed out the flyers very quickly and people were running to their houses. So. <laughs> So, but anyway, so we've got, we've got stuff we're going to share today, and we're just excited to be here. And the first thing I want to talk about, since the women are taking over today, is um, we, our women's uh, ministry here, our, the head of our women's ministry is Faith Barnes. And um, she, among many other things, has, uh, well, she has her own ministry called TGIF, uh, for those of you that watch her on Facebook. She, really good. She's there every every Friday, and she's got a group. It's it's TGIF exclamation point. You don't put the exclamation point in there. You're going to wind up on somebody else's TGIF page, which I did, and you don't want to do that. <laughs> so TGIF exclamation point. But they put out this magazine. Um, she's holding it up for me, the, my <laughs> lovely assistant. Um, the Authentic Women magazine, and um, I'm telling you, this is their third edition. This is the fall edition. They do one for every, um, you can help monitor too if anybody says anything. Um, they, um, this is their fall edition. Um, they do one every season. And so here it is. And so I was just on the phone with her because they're on their way down to the airport because this is her right here. <laughs> they're on their way down to the airport with LCM. They're on their way to uh, South Africa this afternoon for a mission trip with um, LCM and Pastor William Flossie. And so on here I was asking, I said, well, how do people see, if you can't get this, this paper magazine, you can go to the, um, you can go join the TGIF exclamation point group on Facebook. And mm -hmm. she, she uploaded a- It's a digital Yeah, copy, it's a digital. So you can read it all online. And so if and you go to that, if you go to that group on Facebook, you can click on that and get the digital copy. And um, so I have, I have one, I have someone with me today who is featured in this, in this article, <laughs> in this magazine, and that is Tessa Hupton. Well, this is Clara and Marcus right there, but this is, she did an article on Tessa Eats. So um, that is Tessa's um, video blog that she does, and this is all about the background of that. So tell us a little bit about your video blog while you're here. Yeah, so I started doing, um, those of you who know me know I like to uh, eat, eat food and try a lot of different food. And so I got to, I started doing a food blog this year where I just go to different kinds of places and eat and talk about it. And um, I've shared in here because this whole issue is on being a light and how you can be a light in your everyday life. And all the articles, just shout out to all, a lot of people in our yes. church body wrote articles in here, Miss Cammie Ward. Hannah and her husband did one on godly parenting. Cammie gave you guys like a bomb tomato soup recipe in here. I plan to make it. Um, but I was very encouraged reading this, but it's all about how you can be the light in every area of your life. And so I shared for myself when I'm doing this food vlog just for fun, I just started being feeling like I need to find out a way, even in my hobbies and my everyday life, how I can just still be a light uh, where I am and on social media. And so I started, I dubbed some of my posts spiritual bites. I talk about how our body needs to eat, but our spirit needs to eat. And so I try to share the gospel, share the word of God periodically throughout my page. And um, I shared a story in the article that I wrote on um, a time my brother went to, sorry, I keep hitting this microphone. A time my brother went to Uganda with a team and 
everyone on, on the at the church in Uganda was so sold out and so on fire that they were just shaking up our team, just seeing the way they uh, live every day, just sold out and on fire. And one of our young people on the team was asked, you know, what do you want to do um, for your career? What are you looking to, to study? And she's like, oh, I'm looking to do something. And it was some tech department or something. And they're like, oh, okay, well, good. So how are you going to use that for the kingdom? And she said that she was just so kind of like, not ready for that question because she hadn't thought about her job being used for the kingdom. And um, it really challenged her to think, how can I use my job for the kingdom? How can I be a light at my job? And that story always stuck with me. So it's like whenever you're doing anything for me, even when I'm doing my, my food vlogs, I like to, you know, invite people at the restaurant to church, minister to people I'm eating with. And then when I post, post things that are glorifying God and like bringing people to Christ. So the whole article is kind of based, our uh, article and all the things in the magazine are based on shining and being a light wherever you are, which was encouraging to me. Yeah. So if you're on Instagram or YouTube, you can go to Tessa Eats. Eats yes. Eats with a Z on the end. Tessa e Eats with a Z. We're dropping a new episode tonight. It's the Battle of the Chicken Sandwiches. And we had a group of um, our very own young adult guys from the church who they are they made the episode they were the ones who made it interesting because they are very but good. you'll be shocked they're very oh we're yes not gonna, we're not going to tell you who won the chicken sandwich contest it might start some it might start the chicken sandwich war all over again it's going to it's trigger all it's yeah. going to trigger some people <laughs> so but anyway yeah go on there and um and check that out and so um also we've got i just want to i just wanted to share today before we get to some of the other stuff that we've got going on i just I want to always want to bring the word this morning. I mean, this afternoon, and um, so I have I have a, a teaching today on basically I've been challenged by the Holy Spirit on the scriptures that talk about, like for instance, Ephesians one sixteen, and Paul says this. He says, "I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers." And that kind of like began to speak to me. And I thought, you know, making mention of somebody in your prayers. I'm like, is that even a thing? I mean, is that even powerful? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I've always thought, you know, when you pray, you know, there's intercession. You know, if I'm going to pray for someone, I'm going for it. I'm going in. But it's, and I, but I decided I would look that up. And there's other references to it. In, in, in Philemon 1.4, he said, I thank my God making mention of you always in my prayers. And so I looked up that Greek word, and I can't pronounce it, but basically what it means is a calling to mind. You're just mentioning something. You're remembering somebody. Like, uh, like when you're praying, it's like someone comes to mind. And you call out their name. You mention them in your prayers. And it, and it says in Colossians 1.9, it says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard of it, we do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of all wisdom of understanding. And I thought, it's this, it's this similar um, concept of every time he's, Paul is talking here, he's talking about a group of people. He's not talking about an individual. He's saying to the Ephesians, I make mention of you in my prayers all the time. Well, you know he's not listing out everybody's name. He's, he's, call, he's making mention of the church in Ephesus. He's making mention, well, he is in Philemon, that was a person. I'm making mention of you in my prayers. And then in um, 1 Samuel 12, 23, um, Samuel said this, he said, moreover, as for me, and he's talking to the whole nation of Israel here. He said, as for me, since the day, no, wait, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. Hmm. And I thought, wow, that is Samuel. And he's, and other translations say uh, that I should sin against the Lord by ending my prayers for you or by failing to pray for you. And I thought, that is Samuel who's talking to the entire nation of Israel. He's saying, listen, I'm not going to say, I'm a leader. 
I'm not going to sin against the Lord by not praying for you, all of you. I'm going to pray for all of you. He's going to pray for the whole nation. And so I just felt this, um, I just felt really challenged by this because I guess in all the teachings that we've done on prayer and that we've listened to on prayer, I've not really heard this mentioned in our charismatic Pentecostal yeah, circles. Yeah, no, I've never heard that taught. And I guess because we tend to make fun, or not just us, I've heard many people just kind of makes fun of, well, you can't, you know, you, it can't just be bless so-and-so, Lord, bless my mom, bless my dad, bless, you know, da-da-da-da. But actually, that actually has power to it. That's so really I've been challenged because I can pray for, you can pray for a nation. I can pray for the nation of Afghanistan. I can just make mention of them in my prayers. I can say, Lord, I know there are situations going on over there. I know there are Christians over there who need your help. I am remembering them in my prayers today, and I am asking that you help that people group. I can do the same thing for, um, as like Samuel did for the nation, as a leader in the church, I'm responsible to pray for the members of World Harvest Church. I'm responsible to pray for them. I can call out their name. In fact, I was watching um, Pastor Rodney last night and he had gotten all his volunteers up on the stage to honor them because they've done the stand, I think now for 500 nights or something like that. <laughs> and it, was, it went right along with what I had been studying. He said, he says, he says, my wife's a witness. Every night when I go to bed, I'm like, Lord, thank you for all our volunteers. Thank you for everybody who helps pull this ministry off and just make mention of people. Mm -hmm. And so um, in challenging today, I'm challenging myself and to pray more for people groups that it is powerful. And so I wrote down a couple of um, benefits of this type of praying. That doesn't mean we don't intercede for people. That doesn't mean we don't pray the prayer of faith, pray in tongues for people. But in making mention of someone, it's beneficial for me and it's beneficial for them. And God will answer short prayers. <laughs> That's really good. You know, sometimes we don't think that. In fact, I remember Mike Bickle, Mike Bickle, who was over the IHOP, the Kansas City Church. Um, I knew him back in the day, back in St. Louis. He was part of, our, of the St. Louis group back there. And I remember him, he did a teaching on that one time on how God answers short prayers. And Joyce Meyer actually did a teaching on it one time too, where she was like, she felt like she started to get into bondage, that feeling like every prayer has to be this long prayer, you know, cover everything. And, you know, obviously we're still going to do that, but not to keep us away from just mentioning someone. And I have found that in making mention of people, I will actually end up praying for them a lot longer than I would have if I hadn't brought them to my remembrance. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, also, it's, those are unselfish prayers. And it doesn't have anything to do with me. It has everything to do with other people. It's part of interceding for people. It's part of intercession. And so I just wanted to encourage everyone out there today to just, you know, go for it. When you're in prayer, Basically, that word mention is the same root word as remember. Remember people. Say, Lord, who do you need me to pray for today? You know, whoever comes to mind, then make mention of them and pray for those people. And so I know that you do that for your, for your children's ministry. And so mm -hmm. obviously you have a lot to pray for. Tessa is also the director of our children's ministry. And so you pray for and support your, your helpers and workers. Yes, I do. Yeah, I'll pray for them on my way coming into church, pray for them th a lot of time in my morning prayers. And um, no, that's a good encouragement. Cause sometimes you do get that misconception. But Jesus talked about how, you know, we don't need to be like those religious people who, who try to go babble on and on just for the sake of trying to be religious Long. or try to Long. do something out of works based on instead of just your simple faith. And um, even we saw just... This doesn't always happen this way, but when we were in Zambia, just how like sometimes you think when there's a bigger healing that you're going to end up needing to spend like, you know, time and time again, all this time praying. But we saw so many times just these simple prayers prayed in faith, people are just getting healed. Like you don't always have to <laughs> belabor it. God hears you. 
Amen. Well, while we're on this subject, why don't you just give a shout out to your um, children's ministry and um, how much you appreciate everyone who serves in that in that department. Oh, yes. Mom, our children's ministry is amazing. They do such a great job. They truly love the kids. And um, we've seen such great fruit in our kids. Our kids are on fire for God. They're beginning to lead worship. They're beginning to want to take on leadership. But it's because our ministry team really has just set the standard for them. And, um, yeah, it's producing great things. Can I... Can I um give a little preview because um, not this Sunday, but the two Sundays after that, we're gonna be promoting uh, our children's ministry and you have got a new class that you're gonna be introducing soon. Yes. Is it too soon to talk about that? <laughs> we're starting, um, we're gonna be starting a special needs ministry um, oh, as soon as we get the team together during our first service. Cause we have some families who they've not been able to attend service because their kids they need special um, care and attention. And we're also starting a pre-K K class for our older kids because after COVID, we had mushed them all together, but we are expanding and growing and we need a new class. So we're going to be recruiting teachers and helpers. And so yeah, you will be seeing me the next couple Sundays on the stage <laughs> recruiting. God speaking to you. Amen. Message me. We make mention in our prayers of everyone who works in the yes. children's department because <laughs> God, you know what? The kingdom of God could not function without children's workers. So shout out to our children's workers. But let me give a let me give a shout out to some people here. Um, I wanted to say hi to Kathy Simon. She said she said that she watches your blog since she's moved, since she's moved to Tampa. And so I'll give a shout out to her. Scarlet Thanks, Spells. Kathy. Give a shout out to Molly Welsh. Give a shout out to Tasha. Um, Edmund. I heard Tasha. Because this Sunday. She's is, on my Kidman team. She's an amazing. Yeah. And this Sunday is Youth th Sunday. So our youth band is going to be leading worship. And then I just I just got the, the heads up that your daughter Deanna is doing the offering teaching. Oh, so and super she's excited singing. about that. That's awesome. And um, just love everybody that's on here. Michael Baxter, he says good afternoon. And Jennifer Cruz, love you. Jennifer. Just always so so glad to see everybody's name there. It's actually like seeing your face. It's just it's just a delight. And so um, let me just talk about a couple other things that are happening. Um, so for those of you who are in the house and you you see what what goes on, you know we've got our tent, our new tent across the street at the new property. We used it for the 30th anniversary. Um, and, but then we needed to get a few more things done before we could use it regularly. Um, so we love the city of Roswell. We love our fire department. We love the city department. And so they have been working with us to let us know what we need to be permitted in order to do services and meetings across the street in the tent. And news as it happens, we got our permit today. Yay. And we also got our city inspection. They were so they were so great to come out today because um, it wasn't on their schedule, but they knew we went, were having an event Sunday night, and so they came out today and they helped us get everything done. We are we are so uh, we are just so on point with all everything that needed to happen with um, the fire fire and just permitting and everything. So I'm excited about that. So this Sunday night, this is for the youth, you guys. So adults. You can pray about it, but the, this is for the youth. We don't want too many adults over there because it kind of messes up with the vibe, you know, the, the whole cool vibe that the youth have with their games and stuff. So that's at 6 o'clock on Sunday night. You can send your middle school, high school students there. It's going to be a great time. They're going to have fire. They're going to have games. They've got great giveaways. Giving um, away TV, TV, shoes, all any kinds kind of, of shoes cool they want. stuff. You know, that was from the last time I think we put that together. They've got games going on over there. That was even before we had it all um, set up and ready to go. But, man, we're just so excited to have that tent available to use for the youth. And um, actually, Daniel Detroit, who was the evangelist in the Zambia conference that we went to, he's going to be here um, Sunday night, but just for the youth now. For now, <laughs> for the adults, what we're doing for the adults Sunday night is the first, the first Sunday of November is is usually the um, International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. Um, since we have a service that night, we won't be able to do our prayer meeting around that. So this Sunday night, from 6.30 to 7.30, we're doing a special uh, time of international uh, prayer for the internationally persecuted church, which um, our heart 
is really there for that, whatever, especially for Afghanistan. We'll be having a special prayer meeting for that for the adults on Sunday night. And so then, of course, we've got, um, oh, we just did the um, Taste of the Nations this last Wednesday night. Whew, if you missed it, that food was good. It was so good. It's I'm like telling one of my you favorite what, nights. It was <laughs> It was, it was great. Our people really showed out with all of the food that they prepared. Navita did an absolutely awesome job as our missions director. It's one of the most fun nights that we have. We're after, we have a shorter service. We get out there, we fellowship, we eat. And so that kind of is kicking off the uh, missions emphasis that we have. And then um, with this Sunday is the is the nation's flag walk. So during that service, we'll be representing all the nations uh, with their flag, people who attend our church. And we have 65 countries who attend this church and then also the missionaries that we support and work with. It's always a fun time. It's one of my favorite Sundays of the year. So I just wanna let you know that that stuff is going on. And last but not least, um, tomorrow on Saturday, I know it's kind of rainy, it's kind of cold, but we have a trunk or treat that we're having out in the parking lot from four to six. So if you got little ones and you wanna bring them out Sunday, just go from trunk to trunk, um, get some treats. We've got some games. I think we've got a cake walk, a dessert walk that's gonna be happening too. I'll be there with some kind of wonderful treat. I don't exactly know what I'm doing yet, but maybe you can help me with that and with decorated trunks and so there's a lot of fun stuff that's going on we love the fall season around here and we love missions and then of course we cap it off with the missions gala a week from tonight missions gala is a week from tonight i think sunday's the deadline to get your tickets so listen go to church center um, you can go to the website you can get your tickets here on sunday but don't miss out it's going to be a great time it's the one of the fun parts is that we love to see what everybody is wearing that night People love to wear their international stuff. And so anyway, um, do you have anything closing you want to say before we go? Just, uh, no, nope. I'm not. I told her <laughs> I wouldn't put her on the spot. I said, when we're done talking, we, we don't have anything else to say. We can just say goodbye. <laughs> so um, Pastor Merrick will be back. He's uh, flying back up tomorrow and um, he'll be here in time for Sunday. We're looking forward to everything that God is doing in the house. And so we love everybody that's watching now and those that will be watching later. Uh, we just pray for you. I'm making mention of you in my prayers. I'm going to mention you right now. Let's pray for everybody. Amen. Lord, I just thank you for everybody who is watching now, who will watch later. Lord, you know each and every one. You know what their needs are. Lord, we remember them right now. We're making mention of them in our prayers, Lord, that you would bless them. Lately, my, my favorite prayer to pray for people is, Lord, lay your hand upon them and bless them, Lord. And I pray that you establish, establish them in their lives and in their ministries. And may your grace be upon them, Lord. I just pray for everyone in that way today, Lord, and that they sense your presence and they know your love. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for being with us here today, and we love you guys. Love you guys. And we'll see you this weekend. Bye. God bless. Bye.